a high chance of tropical development from the National Hurricane Center now on our Invest 97L, up to an 80% chance of tropical development. So let's talk about this area and, you know, my thoughts about where it could be headed as it moves off towards the west. But not only that, taking a look at what some of the models are showing as well as the overall atmospheric dynamics. Now, first of all, if this is named, which it it's going to be named. It is already showing organization. Even the National Hurricane Center, as of Saturday or excuse me, Sunday afternoon, has said, you know, all this has to do is get a little bit more of its act together, and it's going to be upgraded to the point where it could become a tropical depression. So, Aaron is going to be the next name storm on this. It is a E letter, obviously. Remember, we had Dexter uh, last week, and um, likely going to intensify to a hurricane. Now, the big question is how strong of a hurricane and where exactly it would go. By the way, having Having our first hurricane this time of year well it's not not only not unusual but it's also right about average in fact august 11th is on average our first name hurricane so that would be tomorrow pretty much all right so taking a look at the satellite image right now it's already transporting a lot of moisture with it uh coming in off of the west coast of africa so despite the fact that it is fighting a little bit of dry air and hair and dust towards its north that is trying to wrap into it i think that overall that moisture and convection is kind of beating that out and it's forming it's basically its own little pocket here of moist air that is going to allow it to strengthen now sea surface temperatures in this area of the atlantic are not hot they're definitely closer to lukewarm into the lower 80s so you don't have terrible conditions for rapid intensification at this time basically just north of this you have the dry air you have lukewarm sea surface temperatures but it is going to move west into areas that are definitely more favorable and you take a look at some of our spaghetti plots over the next five days basically most of the models are all in similar agreement this tracks along the southern periphery of the bermuda high and heads off into that westward projection but basically after this point here there's a lot of bifurcation that shows different outputs and possibilities with the bermuda high weakening allowing it to turn towards the north to that actually staying in place as storm forms and moves a little bit further towards the south and even tracks across florida and into the gulf there's that windshield uh, of different effects here and and this is probably one of the models people use the most is the gfs it's usually the first model that pops up on a lot of your different weather apps here and today that does show it moving off towards north but mind you 24 hours ago that actually had it as landfall and 48 hours ago it showed a strong storm in the gulf so it's windshield wiping. It's kind of going back and forth. And you can see here the GFS versus Euro. GFS much further out to sea. Euro is further towards the west. But then if we take a look at the ensembles, which is basically the kind of clustering of uh, a lot of these, um, uh, the, the different models within the operational model and the different slight variables, you can see that there is just that big wide range in the clustering here from west towards east. So that's why I would still highly su suggest don't lock in at any particular model by any means at this point. There definitely is a wide variability from this staying well out to sea or staying on that westward track and passing over the state of Florida. All of these are, are for sure within the realm of possibility, even if we're trending today east. Um, that very quickly could change just based on the atmospheric dynamics on where the exact low cent level center of this storm starts to form up. Or if it moves over an area that is rapidly conducive for development, a stronger storm would allow it to probably turn towards the north more quickly versus a weaker storm that would stay further towards the south and kind of miss that passing trough that would allow set recurvature. So sea surface temperatures closer to the state of Florida, though, are definitely warm enough for tropical cyclone development. This type of track is for sure right about average it's forming out there and kind of tracking either off towards the north and west and recurving so climatologically speaking this is right up the wheelhouse for this type of storm to form and we're also at that time of year which basically the peak of hurricane season is yeah exactly one month to the day away from today so my thoughts i i would say the east coast needs to still continue to monitor this very closely despite some of the major global models showing it pull offshore it is still too close for comfort and it's too still too early to say one particular scenario or not despite the fact we we don't even have a name storm out there yet we don't have a lot of the data that's going into those initializing factors outside of just basically hurricane data and some reports out of the cape or Grand island so we get recon out there that'll really rapidly start to improve things up 
Anyways, I'm meteorologist Robert Sveta, always doing my best to keep you posted of what's happening out here in the tropics at First Coast News. Make sure you check out firstcoastnews.com slash hurricane central for more information.